Hey there, my name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and let's talk about Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. We've had some gameplay videos coming out now, so there's actually something to talk about, instead of making a 20 minute video talking about a single picture, or a 4 hour analysis on a 1 minute teaser trailer. If you're a Dark Souls fan then I'm sure, like me, you've had people who know you are a Dark Souls fan asking what you think of Shadows Die Twice. So let's talk about it a little. Too long, didn't watch version of this, I'm not all that interested in the game. I'll summarise it before going more in depth, but my main issues with it, with what I've seen so far from Sekiro are a clash in basic gameplay ideology. In its simplest form, I don't believe that squishing Dark Souls and Bloodborne and Assassin's Creed together are a good mix. And yes, before you go, well actually, Tenchu. I know Assassin's Creed didn't invent stealth, I know Tenchu exists, and I know Assassin's Creed didn't invent climbing on the environment, but in its most basic form, there are elements from the modern AC games here that I don't believe will mesh with the Souls formula of combat. I don't think it worked in the AC games for starters. Walking around on top of buildings, jumping down to insta-kill enemies is fine in an actual stealth game. But when you get spotted and it turns into a completely different game, enemies who could previously be killed by one blade to the neck are now able to stand there and be clubbed in the chest with a giant sword 500 times just because they are aware of your existence. I thought it was ridiculous in AC and it looks ridiculous here, unless there's some sort of law reasoning that, I don't know, enemies gain power when they see you for some reason? Now granted, most of the AC games also had trash combat, whereas I'm sure Sekiro's will be more than passable. And remember, this is just my early impressions based on what we've seen coming out of Gamescom. I am hoping that I'll be proven wrong and the game will be amazing. I just don't find myself getting excited at anything we're seeing here. I do not personally enjoy hybrid stealth action games. I love action games and I love stealth games. If a game features stealth, I want it to be fully featured and fully functioning. When I play Splinter Cell, I appreciate the option to ghost the level. That is to say, never kill an enemy, never knock out an enemy, never even let them know I was there. A ghost. Of course, the options are there to also rampage through a level and kill everything, but in Sekiro, I get the feeling the stealth is going to be largely a gimmick. Again, I don't know that for certain, but will the game allow you to ghost levels entirely? What about bosses? Can we just sneak past them? Will the stealth mechanics be in a place to support that? It is possible, but I highly doubt it. I just feel like the stealth mechanics are going to be very half-hearted and half-arsed. In which case, don't have them at all. Like, why would you have stealth if everyone's just going to rampage through the level anyway, if there's like no reason or mechanics to sort of make it enjoyable? Similar to how Chalice Dungeons were a half assed attempt at, what, replayable, procedurally generated dungeons? I love Bloodborne, but Chalice Dungeons, I'm not going to defend them, I think they're awful and they shouldn't be in the game at all, especially because there is cool content, such as the yarn and boss fight, locked away behind this tedious, generic garbage. So how about the actual combat? Well that's another concern. Dark Souls and Bloodborne have enjoyable combat, but I don't think anyone would argue it's really all that deep. You can master the basic mechanics in Dark Souls in a few hours, dodge through attacks, backstab or R1 spam an enemy when you have an opening. Obviously I'm simplifying to a certain extent, but if you compare it to a game like Devil May Cry or Ninja Gaiden, it's simple and easy to pick up. I can not play Dark Souls for months and pick it up again and get back into the swing of things in like that in a moment. That's not a bad thing. If I picked up Devil May Cry 3 again now after not playing it for 10 years, it would probably take me 5 hours or more to become good again because the combat has a lot more technical depth to it. A lot of the joy in Dark Souls comes from the player options. Sure, weapon movesets are simple, but that allows you to try out a lot of them. There are a dozen weapon classes and hundreds of weapons to choose from. Every player can be somewhat unique and there's many th new things to try out. Everyone might have their own favourite weapon. 
If you've been around my channel for a while, you might remember that whilst I love Bloodborne, I found the game to have a lot less replay value than Dark Souls because of the lack of weapons, somewhat rectified in the DLC of course, and I feel like this situation is going to be even more dramatic in Shadows Die Twice. Let's look at it on a grade. Dark Souls weapons are very simple, but there's loads of them. Bloodborne has less weapons, but they are slightly more complex with slightly larger movesets, because you know, they transform and so on. And now we have Sekiro, going in that very same direction. There appears to be mostly just a katana as your main weapon, then you have tools on your fake arm as your secondary option, such as a guard crushing hammer blow attack. See, here's where my concerns lie. I simply don't believe right now that Sekiro's combat is going to be complex enough to keep it fun and satisfying when combined with the number of options we'll have. But hey, we don't know for certain how many options there are, and we don't even know exactly how the combat works. There appears to be a posture system that is very similar to how the chaos element worked in Neo. You could think of it as a stagger system. Once you hit an enemy enough times in quick succession, you will break their posture, allowing for a strong attack. That's how it appears to work from my understanding of watching a gameplay video. So yeah, there's going to be new mechanics like that. We aren't literally just getting Dark Souls 1 or Dark Souls 3 combat, there's going to be new elements. But are they enough? I hope they will be, but nothing I've seen so far has given me the impression that will be the case. So far it just looks like a kind of streamlined and gutted experience. Right now to me it looks like we're getting half-assed stealth mechanics and a combat system that won't be deep enough to support that half of the game. To compare with Devil May Cry again, I know that even if Nero in Devil May Cry 5 only has one gun and one sword, the game's combat will have the depth to support that. There will be a lot of movement options, attack options and so forth to keep it fresh and exciting and so that there's always something new to learn or improve at. But you take that approach in Dark Souls and it's like, I only have the one longsword and I'm going to use it for 50 hours so I can master the art of knowing when to R1 spam, when to roll, when to R2? It, no, it just doesn't work. But I hope I'm wrong with Sekiro, hopefully it's going to be kind of, you know, like some Ninja Gaiden style, having lots of options and combos, because otherwise just one weapon is not going to cut it. Again, I don't want the game to be bad, why would I want that? But I'm also not going to sugarcoat it just because it's a FromSoft game and I liked some of their other games. Then we have the setting. It's not really that interesting to me, but hey, this is a purely subjective matter. I had the same thing with Bloodborne, and I'll remind you that I think Bloodborne is an amazing game, but the whole feudal Japan thing just doesn't really do it for me. I didn't really enjoy it in Neo either, but one thing I appreciated there is that William was our entry into Japan. He had never been there, it was all foreign and strange to him. And that works as a story mechanic, because we discover things through William as our proxy. I don't imagine the Secretary's story will be very engrossing, but it's entirely possible it will have a great narrative. But speaking of Neo, my biggest complaints regarding that game were how samey the levels were. I feel like Shadows Die Twice will get that a lot better. Neo was shrines, temples, mountains, they were all blending together into a boring mass, all of the levels feel the same. You know why it worked? Because even though the levels were bland, the combat in Neo blew Dark Souls away on a technical level. But as stated earlier, just because Dark Souls was simple and easy to pick up, that is not a bad thing. It's like comparing Smash Bros with Virtua Fighter or a Blaze Blue, some anime fighter. In Smash Bros, you can do a cool special attack just by pressing B or up and B, whereas in Blaze Blue or anime fighter, you need to do some complex button input to achieve the same thing. That complexity isn't always necessarily a good thing, but you have to take context into account. The simple combat works in Dark Souls because of the very nature of the game, but if you put that simple combat in Devil May Cry, then you're just left with a kind of, what is the point in this experience? Nothing's crazy. I don't know if Sekiro is going to have a super dramatic twist like Bloodborne had, but I'm sure they will handle their setting quite well, and there'll probably be some really stunning locations. It just doesn't appeal to me at face value. The Victorian horror doesn't appeal to me either. Feudal Japan? Eh. 
I loved Dark Souls' European fantasy setting with a Japanese spin on it, and I think those two things meshed very well, just as they did in Berserk. What else do we know of Sekiro? Well, we're playing as a set character and there is no multiplayer. No multiplayer isn't bad on its own, like you know the new God of War game that came out a while ago? I didn't go, oh this has no multiplayer, that's an automatic negative. However, multiplayer is a large part of what keeps me coming back to the Dark Souls and Bloodborne games. Once I've been through these crazy landscapes and levels, I want to play through them again with a friend, so I can't knock any points from Sekiro on the basis that it's single player, but at the same time, it is something that the series has been- okay, not the series, it's something that its inspiration, its, I don't know, spiritual predecessor has been known for. It does also lower my interest in the game by a substantial margin. It's like, maybe I play Sekiro and I beat it once and then what, I'm never going to touch it again, probably, unless it's amazing. Again, it comes back to replay value, and the fact that multiplayer is a big part of what keeps these games popular and fresh, for me. In Devil May Cry's case, I keep replaying it because the combat is so good, but as mentioned earlier, I don't think Sekiro is going to have combat of that level. Maybe it will, hopefully it will. But walking through Lordran, Drang Lake, Lothric, Yharnam, speculating on things with my friends, pointing out details in the levels, or just doing really stupid stuff as demonstrated in my co-op montage videos. That's what keeps me coming back to the Souls games. Playing as a set character doesn't really bother me, although I know some people are not a fan because Dark Souls was a role-playing game, people enjoyed making their own characters and coming with backstories for them. This time that's out, but again, we don't know what sort of story they're telling, so that's not really a bad point, even if it might drive some people away as they prefer creating characters. What's more curious to me is, well, how much character will this dude have? William from Neo was quiet and stoic, for example, but he had his moments and he could be a little funny in a low-key way. How about this guy in Sekiro? Well, I guess we have to find out. So far, nothing about his animations suggests any sort of character to me. I know I keep bringing it up, but in Devil May Cry, Virgil and Dante's character comes across in their animations. Now, in Dark Souls and Bloodborne, the animations for the most part, there's nothing wrong with them, you know, they are good animations, but they don't give any character to your character, which is intentional because your character is your character, you know? It would be weird in Dark Souls if your character had like really flamboyant and stylish attacks if that wasn't the way you had sort of intended them to be roleplaying. And Sekiro seems the same sort of way, everything is very utilitarian, and that's not the best real option when you're playing as a specific set character in my mind. If this guy has a personality, it should come across in his animations. Overall though, I look at gameplay of Sekiro and I think, oh this looks like Bloodborne in Japan, that's neat I suppose. I think it's cool we're getting some more verticality in the level design with the grappling hook and climbing, but again, I wonder how important it's going to be, and are the enemies going to have really stupid and annoying tactics to stop that? Like, if you climb up a wall, are they just going to start spamming rocks at you? Remember how in Assassin's Creed uh, 2, I think it was, if you go, if you start climbing, the enemies start like spamming projectiles at you because they can't really climb properly? That was so annoying and dumb. Is Sekiro going to have stuff like that? Remember in Dark Souls 1, if you're fighting Calamite and you climb back up the ladder, he just has this attack where he flies up and like insta-kills you. It's like, cool, I guess thanks for punishing me for trying to be inventive and creative. Of course, in Sekiro, that sort of behaviour should be encouraged, so I'm hoping they're not going to have really stupid um, inbuilt counters to it, shall we say. Verticality in Splinter Cell is actually really important and plays a big part in your gameplay. If verticality in Sekiro is just going to be get up there so I can do an insta-kill plunging attack, then it's going to be virtually the same as it is in Dark Souls 1, where the only reason to really go up somewhere is so you can plunging attack. It doesn't really change the way you play in a realistic way. But it could go left or right, it could be bad or good, and I'm going to assume that FromSoft is smart and will work it in well. Nothing I've seen so far has given me very much enthusiasm though. Now, 
I will pick the game up at launch, I'm almost certain. I have my concerns, but I'm also very curious to see how the game goes. I don't think I'm going to regret buying it, I just feel like I'm going to play it once, and then I'm going to go, uh, okay, now I'm going to go play something else, you know? I, I don't think it's going to have very much staying power. Perhaps Burnout plays a role here. We've been having Dark Souls almost non-stop since 2011. We had Dark Souls in 2011, Demon's Souls a few years before that, 2009, then we had Dark Souls again on PC, then we had Dark Souls 2 in 2014, Bloodborne 2015, Dark Souls 2 Scar of the First Sin 2015, Dark Souls 3 2016, that's to say nothing of, you know, the Dark Souls clones, Lords of the Fallen, The Surge, Neo, maybe other ones that I'm forgetting? I just think we need a bit of a break. Miyazaki and his team need time to refresh and work on other projects that have nothing to do with Dark Souls, and that is one point I will argue. I've seen people saying, oh this is nothing like Dark Souls. That's just plain wrong. The Souls formula is here, and it's here in force. Now it's a formula I love, but it's gotten a little stale, and just because it's in Japan, or you have an arm you can wallop people with, that doesn't mean it's still not Dark Souls, just because it doesn't have invasions. It still is basically the same underlying heart and soul of Dark Souls. And it's gotten stale to me. You know why Rockstar games tend to work? Because they don't bring out Grand Theft Auto every single year. We need breathing room. The involvement of Activision has been a large concern for some people. Whilst I'm not thrilled about it, I don't feel like, oh, it's Activision, so the game is automatically going to suck. My biggest concerns on that front would be how they sell the game, how they go about things like DLC, and possibly trying to put in elements that don't clash with the design. I mean, are they going to have like a season pass? Or, I mean, I know Dark Souls has been having season passes, but historically, Activision have some of the worst DLC practices of everyone and anyone. Overall, Activision is not a big issue to me but it's also not a positive. I just kind of feel like Activision have gone, hey, we want a slice of this Dark Souls pie, make one for us. In the same way they went, hey, we want a slice of this um, Halo pie, give us Destiny, and then Destiny... L let's not even talk about Destiny. At the end of the day, I'm more excited about Neo 2 and Devil May Cry 5, the latter of which I think is releasing probably in the same time span as Sekiro. Neo 2 has gone away from a set character and has character creation, which suggests to me that it's going to emphasise the multiplayer aspects more, which is nice as the first game's multiplayer was a nuisance to deal with. Neo had a lot of potential, so I'm really excited to see where the second game goes, especially considering the amazing combat that game had. Sekiro? Well, it's a wait and see deal for me. See, here's the thing. Dark Souls, to me, is such a good game that we didn't need Dark Souls 2 or Dark Souls 3. There are issues with Dark Souls, I'm not saying it's perfect, I'm saying they pretty much almost exactly hit the goal they needed to hit. I didn't play Dark Souls and go, this game is great, but in the manner that I did with Dragon's Dogma. I love Dragon's Dogma, it's one of my all-time favourite games, and yet, after I finished it, I was like, oh, I love this game so much, but I wish it had this or that. Same with Neo. I was like, wow, I, I'm absolutely loving Neo. The combat is so good, but I wish the levels were more interesting. I wish the multiplayer was less stupid. <laughs> but with Dark Souls, I was like, this game is so good. All that I really had to add to that was, but I wish Bed of Chaos wasn't garbage, or I wish the second half of the game wasn't quite so rushed feeling, or I wish the PvP wasn't stupid with backstab fishing. I just don't feel like there's much more growth for Dark Souls, and Dark Souls 3 is a great indication of that. The sort of gameplay has improved from Dark Souls 1, but everything else is like, it's the, it's the same or worse because they're repeating stuff and it's getting stale. Maybe Sekiro is going to be this amazing breath of fresh air. I hope it is. I hope I'm going to play it and I'm going to get the same feeling I had playing Dark Souls where I just can't stop thinking about the game and 
when I'm not playing it, I want to talk about it, you know? I love when games give you that feeling. I love when anything gives you that feeling, if it's like a book, a movie, whatever. But just right now, I, I can't muster up any enthusiasm for Sekiro. I would be lying if I pretended to, and that's not what I'm about. So I'll buy it, but I'm not enthusiastic about it for now. Maybe a network test will change my mind. They won't have a network test because there's no network. There's no online. Well, damn. Maybe we just need like a beta and an alpha. What do you think though? Are you excited about Sekiro Shadows Die Twice? What draws you to it if so? Or do you have concerns as well? What are they? Please let me know down in the comments your thoughts. And if you're not subscribed, why are you doing me like that babe? I work my butt off making these excellent and terrible videos for you and you can't even hit subscribe, I'm hurt, I'm distraught, I'm gonna poop myself, I'm that upset. And I'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day. Ciao.